Today, we're going to be painting a picture of a disco ball, otherwise known as a mirror ball. I'm pretty sure you can figure out why it's called that, as the whole surface of the sphere is covered in very small mirrors. Wherever the light reflects, you'll often see a little bit of a sparkle or a twinkle or a reflection of whatever it is that the mirror is reflecting. Our painted disco balls are going to be a little bit different because ours are going to glow underneath black light. I know. It's amazing. We're going to be using fluorescent paints to create our very own mirrored ball. This will go in the black light or glow gallery for the art show. But to begin, we're going to start by creating the lines because what you're going to notice is, is that this flat circle that I'm painting on has the illusion of being round like a sphere. That didn't happen by accident. Let me walk you through how I drew those lines to create a flat surface and make it into something like this. I'm going to begin drawing on my circle with a permanent marker or a Sharpie. The problem with that is, is that if I make something that I don't like, I can't erase. This is why I recommend for you that you begin with a pencil and draw lightly. Your first step is going to be starting at the very top middle, you're going to draw a vertical line as straight as you can going down to the bottom middle. Now, the reason I say as straight as you can is because we're drawing on a piece of corrugated cardboard, which means that cardboard is a little bit lumpy. So if it's not perfectly straight, it's fine. Rotate your board so that now your line is horizontal. And let's draw another vertical line. If you're drawing with a pencil, reminder to draw light until you get it right. Draw lightly in case you don't like a line that you drew. Now I need to start bending my lines a little bit because I want this to look like a sphere. So I'm making a very small arched line. Check it out. I'm going to start here. I bend it out just a little bit before bringing it back down to that point. And I'm going to continue this with about five lines. Now for you, you may want to do a couple of things. You may want to practice draw with your finger first. You may want to lightly draw with a pencil, of course. You also have a dry erase circle on your table. I would recommend practice drawing on that first before drawing on your board. Now the reason we're using a curved or a bent line is because we're trying to take this flat shape of a circle and make it look like a sphere. We're trying to create the illusion that it's rounded. Now, right here, I have six lines, but what I found later is it's a lot easier if you just stick with five, especially if you're drawing in a smaller circle like me. Now I'm doing the same thing on the opposite side, starting at the top, always starting in the same place, bending it out, the highest it should be is when it crosses over, we'll call that the equator line. And then it comes all the way back down to the bottom. On this side, I just stuck with drawing five different lines. I'm halfway there. So now I'm going to rotate my board. But you can already start to see that I've begun to create the illusion that this is a sphere. I'm going to do the same thing, but I find it a lot easier to always, when I'm drawing something, especially if I'm drawing something like lines, to be able to pull my hand downward, which is why I rotated my sphere or my circle, because I didn't want to bring my hand across. Again, my board is a corrugated piece of cardboard, so it's going to have a little bit of a lumpy feel when you draw on it. And once again, just drawing lightly starting at the top, always matching up, bringing it outward, and then back in when you come to the bottom. On this side, I'm going with five lines, and then I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. If you're drawing with a pencil first, when you're finished with your pencil lines, then you can go back over all of your pencil lines and trace with your permanent marker. So I'm just finishing up with my last couple of lines, slowly and carefully, five or six lines, starting in the same place, coming away, and then meeting back at that bottom point. And now you can really see that I've been able to create the illusion that this flat circle, 
which is a shape, now looks like the form of a sphere, which is a form. Two different elements of art, but I've created the illusion that this is a form. Next step, time to paint. Now that all of my lines are drawn on my disco ball, I'm ready to add the paint. Now I'm using all fluorescent colors because this is going to go in our glow gallery. And when the lights are on, we want these to, you know, glow. So that's why I'm using the colors that glow under black light. If you want to have your black light handy, you can grab one and then you can test out the colors and see which ones really pop. The only color I notice that doesn't glow very well is the blue. The first thing you're going to want to do when you're using these paints is to wake them up. Up and I just used a little bit of water and a spray bottle, otherwise known as wake up juice. Spray these really well. And because they are much loved and well used, you're going to notice that a lot of the color is now along the edges or sides of each little individual tray. So for that reason, you'll want to grab the paint around the sides. What I've noticed about this paint is because it's kind of a water-based paint, it can be translucent or a little bit watery. And you want your colors to be really opaque. That means that you can't see through them. So you'll want to make sure to really load up your brush to add as much color as possible. I'll even give you a little bit of silver paint so that you can add some shimmer or sparkle. The only problem with the silver paint is that it doesn't glow under black light. But when the lights are on, it'll still make your mirror ball or disco ball look amazing. Now this is a little bit time consuming. So here's a little trick that I did. I loaded up my brush quite a bit with one color and then I painted 10 different little squares. Some of these squares are pretty tiny, so you might want to get two flat brushes from the store. One flat brush being nice and big for those bigger shapes, and then a little brush for the smaller ones. And the reason I say to paint about 10 is because then you'll start to fill up your spaces a little bit faster. I try not to paint them all in a row. You want it to look like it's shimmering and shining, so you want to spread out those colors as you paint them. So once you've got 10 of one color, clean your brush paint 10 or 15 of another color, clean your brush and paint some more. I will say I had a little trouble staying inside all of those teensy weensy sharpie lines. If that really bothers you that you got out of your lines a little bit, then once your painting is dry, you can simply trace back over your lines. But once the black light shines on it, it really doesn't matter because it just looks amazing. You'll wanna fill in each little space. So again, make sure you use the correct brushes for the job. And you'll notice where I'm shining my light, all the colors really pop except for that blue and the silver. But that's okay. If you wanna add those colors, that's totally fine too. All right, friends, let's get started on painting our disco ball. <laughs> 